Hey, what's going on, everybody? My name is Brandon, and today I want to talk to you about another method of Linux privilege escalation. Now, this has to do with being inside of the LXD group in Linux. So if we take a look at our low privilege user here, by the way, this is just an Ubuntu machine that I am SSH into from my Kali machine. And we have a whoops, we have a low privilege shell. And you can see we're in this LXD group. Now, what this is, it's, it's the Linux container daemon. So it gives us the ability to spin up and control Linux containers on the system. Now, if you haven't seen this method of privilege escalation before, I'd highly recommend you go check out my video on the Docker group privilege escalation. A little card will be popping up now. You can go ahead and check that out because these methods are very, very similar in the ways that they work. Now, essentially what we're going to be doing as you know a quick overview of how this privilege escalation works is since we can start containers on the system we can download a container image onto here start a new container and mount our root file system so if we start a container and we have root in the container and then we mount slash right so like you know if we cd to slash right now if we were to mount this file system into the container and we have root on the container then we could edit this file system on the host machine while doing that, we can add a new backdoor user or things like that that would allow us to have full root control of the host machine through the container. So I hope that makes a bit of sense. So let's just go ahead and back to our home directory. Now, the first thing we need to do is actually build a container that we can transport over to the target machine so we can import that image. So a lot of people were asking in the, uh, the Docker video I did if there was a way to do this privilege escalation method if the machine did not have access to the internet. So I wanted to make sure that um, for this target machine, you do not need internet access. We're going to build the container image on our Kali machine and then transfer it over to the target system. So I'm going to hop over here or just have a blank directory set up. Now, uh, we're going to be using an Alpine image for the container again. And here is a link to the Git repo. I'll drop that down below in the description. So you can go ahead and check it out for yourself. Now what we want to do is just clone this repository. So we're just going to do a Git clone and then the URL there. Perfect. Now you can see we have this directory. Now we should just be able to run this um, build Alpine script as sudo. Um, and it should build the image for us. But I've been noticing that there are some issues here and it was giving me a hard time trying to build let's see yeah so you can see we're getting some errors here and it's complaining about uh some of the mirrors not being able to uh, be found so i did a little bit of digging about this issue and i found an open issue on the github repository that had a quick solution here so uh basically it comes down to the mirror file not being created uh, when we're cloning the repository and that's causing some issues for the the container to actually be built so you can see it gives us instructions on how to fix this here. We can just CD into this directory. Oops, sorry about that. So we can CD into here. And then we just need to make a directory. Let's see what the name of that one was. Let's see Alpine Mirrors. Perfect. All right, so let's make that directory. Oh, we could do that as with sudo. Perfect. And then we'll just uh, CD into there. So we'll CD to Alpine Mirrors. And then we'll just do a sudo vim. And I believe they called it, let's see, was it mirrors.txt? Perfect. Just want to make sure that we're doing this step by step just so we can fix this issue here. Oh, sorry. I always hit uh, control shift C to copy. I'm too used to doing this in the terminal instead of in the web browser. All right, there we go. So I'll paste that in. And now we just need to add a mirror into here. We'll just add this single mirror that is listed right here. And that will fix the build script for this. Uh, and I know a lot of people will have the same issue here. So I want to show the quick fix for that. Because I think I did this privilege escalation method in a hack the box machine a while ago. And I was really struggling with it because of this. Uh, so let's just see. We'll go all the way back to here. And now we should be able to do this pseudo build Alpine. This should actually build the container image for us and spit it out in a tar archive. And we can then transfer that over to our target machine. Awesome. So now you can see we have... Uh, this tar archive here that we can use as a container image and we'll transfer that over to the target machine to uh, actually import that Alpine image. So now what we want to do, actually let's get that file name. Let's just spin up a simple uh, Python HTTP server to transfer this file over. So we'll do uh, sudo python -m simple HTTP server and we'll put that on port 80. Awesome. So now let's just grab this file name here. We're going to hop back over to our low priv shell and let's just do a wget to download that. So wget 192.168.1.169 slash that big long tar archive name. Awesome. So now we have transferred this over here. 
Now, the next thing we want to do is just do an LXD init. This is just going to initialize the Linux container daemon. Um, so we have that running on our system. It's going to ask you a bunch of questions. If this is the first time that we've done it. So uh, we can just hit enter through all these and leave them all the default. It doesn't really matter for the use case we're going to be doing. So just hit enter and go through all of these. And then LXD will be started and we are good to go. Now, the next thing that we want to do is actually import that image that we just transferred over. So what we're going to do uh, is just do an LXC for a Linux container image import and then the container name and then we're just going to give this an alias so let's just call this um we'll call it privesk all right so now this is going to actually um, import this image into lxc so if we do an lxc uh, image list we can see that we have this image now in lxc which is awesome so now we can actually initialize a container from that image. So, you know, we're actually going to be starting the container now from that Alpine image that we transferred over. So we'll just do an LXC uh, init. We'll just call this Privesk uh, dash container. If I could type today, geez, sorry about that. All right. And then uh, we need to specify a new config option. So let's just see. It's going to be dash security um, dot privileged, I believe equals true. Now, essentially what this means is, well, by default, LXC is going to be spawning unprivileged containers. So if you have root in the container, you're not necessarily going to have root on the file system. That's because it does some UID mapping. So, you know, if you were to start this without the security privilege, privilege equals true option, what it's going to do is, you know, say the container UID, you know, typically root is UID zero. Well, on the host machine, it might start the UID at like 10,000 or something like that. So, you know, the root on the container isn't actually root on the host file system. It's UID 10,000 or something like that, right? So it does some, some mapping of the UIDs like that. But with this security privilege equals true config option, if we have uh, the UID zero in the container, it's going to map to UID zero on the host, which means that since we will have root in the container, since we have the ability to control these containers, that means we will actually have root on the file system too. There's no UID mapping in place there. So now we can go ahead and hit enter and get that started. Oh, let's see, uh, error not found. Oh, my bad. So what we want to do is actually, uh, I forgot one command here. So this is just going to be privesk. So this is going to be the name of the container, sorry, the name of the image, and then the name of the container that we're going to spawn. Perfect. All right, so now we have actually created a container from that Alpine image that we had. So if we just do an LXC um, list, we should see the containers that we have. We have this privs container, but it is stopped right now. And now the next thing we need to do is actually add a mounted file system to this container. Now this is going to be in the form of a disk device. And what we're going to do is we're going to mount the slash directory of our host file system to like the slash mount directory of the container. That way, when we start the container and we have root in the container, whenever we browse to slash mount slash, you know, root or whatever we name it, then we're actually going to have, you know, root in the container and we'll have the entire file system of the host and we can make changes as root. And when we can do that, we can do all sorts of fun things like, you know, adding SSH keys, adding new users, giving ourselves pseudo permissions, whatever you want to do, you can be creative at that point, but you're essentially going to have root over the entire host file system, and that is your privilege escalation. So the next thing we need to do is we'll do um, LXC config, and we need to add a new device. So we'll do device add, and we'll call um, the, well, the container we want to add the device to is privesk container. We'll just call this, I don't know, my device for now. It doesn't really matter. The device type is a, a disk, not a desk. The source is going to be uh, slash, right? Because we want to mount the entire file system of the host. The path where we want to mount it to, we'll just do slash mount slash root. And then uh, we do want to specify recursive equals true as well, because we want to make sure it gets all of the directories and files within that slash directory. So now if we go ahead and hit enter on here, we can see that device, my device was added to the privas container. So there's our mounting of the file system done. Now all we need to do is do an LXC start of privs container. All right, so now if we do an LXC list, we should see that perfect. Privs container is running. That is exactly what we wanted to see. 
So now we have that Alpine container running and we have full control of the container. We turn the U we turn the UID mapping off. So once we have root in the container, we have root over the whole file system and we mounted the file system of the host device to the container into the mount directory. So now all we need to do is do an LXC uh, exec privs container, right? So we wanna execute a command inside of our container that we just created. And let's just do slash bin slash sh so we can get an interactive shell. So now if we do like an ID, we are root, right? We're UID zero. If we do an LS, there's nothing in here. So let's just go to slash. All right, so we can see all of these um, files here. But like, for example, if we cat slash Etsy slash, you know, uh, shadow, for example, this is actually the shadow file of the container, right? Because this is slash Etsy slash shadow. And you can see none of the users that we had on our real machine, like low priv, are actually in here, right? So this is not the shadow file that we're actually looking for. What we need to do, remember, is we mount it to slash uh, mount. So if we cd to um, mount and root, root is where we mounted to, right? So now if we do an ls in here, this is actually the root file system of the host machine. And any changes that we make here are going to be reflected instantaneously on the host. So now if we do like a cat Etsy shadow, right? Notice that I did not put a slash here, right? So if we cat this file, then we can see all the actual users and stuff that are on the host machine with their passwords, right? Like low priv and things like that, right? So in order to get from this low priv user to root, again, this is the step where you can be really creative. You can do it really however you want. You have full root control of the file system. Personally, I would say the easiest way to do this is we'll do a vim etsy shadow. Uh, we can't use vim. Okay, we'll use vi. Awesome. Now what I would do is we'll just go down to the bottom here. We'll copy this entire hash. All right. So field two is the password hash. Let's go back up to the top and let's edit this. Let's paste this hash into here and then we'll do a right quit. So what we did is just made the root password the same as our low priv user password, right? So now if we exit out of this container. We should just be able to do a su dash root. It's going to ask for the password and we already know this password. Perfect. Now we have root on our host file system. Now, if you wanted, you could just delete that password entirely, or you can add a new user if you didn't know the low priv user's password or something like that, right? So there's a, a bunch of different ways you could do the privesk once you get to that point. But since we already knew the password, we could just copy the hash and put it in place in the shadow file. But now you can see we actually have root at server, and that is our privilege escalation done. If you found this video useful, please remember to like and subscribe down below. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.